All right. It's my first time doing this. Uh, my name is Felipe, and I'm about to react to Death Battle, Winter Soldier versus Red Hood, because I'm bored. Um, but really, I've always wanted to try to do a reaction. I've been thinking about it for a while. And uh, just never really got around to it. But I think this is a good one to start with. So I've been following Death Battle for a while. I've been a big fan of it for a few years now. Uh, started off binge watching uh, a lot of the earlier ones and then just kept following up. And honestly, it's probably my favorite YouTube series, like, ever. Next to Dragon Ball Z Abridged, but we know where that's at right now. I'm going to try to do things a little bit differently than other reaction videos. Give a little spiel right now. I'm not really a versus community guy. Don't really care too much about the uh, accuracy of these arguments. I do think Death Battle does a better job of presenting arguments than uh, most other similar series. But uh, really, I just like a lot of the production and a lot of the work that Death Battle puts into. I follow like the uh, Death Battle cast, seen a lot of their panels that they posted up, watch the matchup previews every any time they come up, and uh, it's just a really fun show. It's I like nerdy stuff like this. I like mashup stuff like this, and it's just also really silly, um, and just fun to watch. So yeah, what I also want to do is at some point not really react to the Q and A's because I do think those are important, but not like a reaction, just watch those on my own after watching this video and kind of just give my thoughts on what their process was, what their analysis was, because I don't really see anybody else uh, doing that. But for now, pretty stoked for this, honestly, because it's a live action. Ismail Hawk, I thought, did a really good job with the Nightwing Daredevil one. And I saw the sneak peek for this during, I guess, the RTX panel that just came out recently. And it looks really dope. As far as who I think will win, I want to say Winter Soldier. Oh, uh, history with the characters. I honestly don't know a lot about uh, a lot of the characters that Death Battle covers. I just like watching nerdy shit. Um, but I am familiar with these two characters. Red Hood, obviously, former Jason Todd. I actually did see a little bit of his uh, origin story into the Red Hood and a couple of his interactions with Batman. And he's a really tricky guy, from what I could gather. From the little bit I've, uh, that I've seen, he's definitely got some of that uh, Batman planning ahead uh, kind of traits. But I feel like the Winter Soldier is going to take it still. Honestly, Robin, DC character, there's probably going to be some history over there, some feat that he's got. That's just going to prove that he's, even with Winter Soldier's metal arm, Jason Todd's probably still stronger, probably still faster, probably got better tech. But I'm still leaning towards Winter Soldier, who, honestly, all I know of Winter Soldier is that he's Bucky. Um, and from what I've seen from the MCU. Anyway, I feel like I've spieled long enough. And uh, let's get to watching this. Play. Sidekicks. Every good superhero or world conquering scientist needs one. Right, Boomstick? That's right. Hey, I think we all know which one of us is the real sidekick. Neither of your sidekicks. Such as the Winter They're Soldier, both just Marvel's brainwashed assassin. Dorks. And Red Hood, DC's resurrected Robin turned vigilante. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Hey, had to button here really quick. Um, I messed up, pushed the wrong button, cut off some of the recording. Just missed some of the intro. Did also just want to explain, I will sometimes pause and read the tabs on the video because I like to keep track of those. Forgot to mention, definitely check out the original video at Death Battle. Post a link in the description. That out of the way, moving on. A foe who seemingly abandoned the values the duo previously shared. All right, because I do want to read these tabs. The Infinity Formula grants Bucky a healing factor much slower than Deadpool. All right, 
and play. These two have fought plenty of times, and Bucky's been able to hold his own against his former partner. His advanced strength and speed, coupled with his knowledge of various fighting styles, make for a lethal combination. He's skilled in everything from hand-to-hand -hand close quarters to an impressive arsenal of ranged weaponry. Oh yeah, he's got Bucky a ton of scales, kind of a cap, I guess. So only he can shoot him. I if wonder if other than the Winter Soldier Jason scales to Bruce. Firearms, they will self-destruct. He also wields a katana, throwing knives, pretty much whatever comes in the welcome bag at Assassin Con. Always a good time at Ascon. But we can't forget his most iconic piece, the arm. Well, I mean, it's definitely the coolest metal arm I've ever seen. What about mine? I made it myself. Come on, Wiz. Look at that thing. His is super buff. Plus, it's got a flamethrower, a retractable blade. It can emit electric charges, and it's so strong. Knives break on impact. It's not about the size of the arm. Oh, my God. Well, sure, oh, it's they strong, went there. But it's not indestructible. It's been torn up by a vibranium sword. Wait, wait. I thought the arm was made of vibranium. Okay. You're thinking of the movies. In the comics, Bucky did not receive a vibranium arm birthday present from T'Challa. Canonically, his arm is made up of strong but unspecified metals, likely a form of titanium alloy similar to the Interesting. Iron Man suit. Even All right. without vibranium, it's tough to keep up with Bucky. He took a direct shot from Iron Man's repulsor blast, which was strong enough to tear through a helicopter moments later. And consider the heroes he's the army's added, best Wolverine, sniper. Daredevil. Iron Man, and obviously Captain America. At 15 or 16. Team Bucky and Camp were at odds for so long. They should have just knocked him on the head real good. That's the scientific way to get people to remember who they are, right? Or you can use a cosmic cube to rewrite their memories. That's what Captain America did to save Bucky. Who was so pissed off, he just straight up crushed the cube with his bare bionic hand. While this brought him back, Bucky wasn't the same man who went into those icy waters. His remorse for his crimes was tough to overcome, and he would always wonder if he's done enough good to finally redeem himself. But thankfully, it was hard to shake everything he learned from his hero, Steve. Bucky returned. I noticed there haven't really been any feats or calcs. Took up the shield himself for a while, proving that despite his sordid past, Bucky's persistence. There's no math in this rundown so far. In his own right. Oh, we got an ad coming up. When you think of the word yeah, there was no math in that rundown. immediately comes to mind. You, it's you. N no, Robin, the boy wonder, Batman's iconic crime-fighting partner. Yeah, it's a close second. Too bad the Cape Crusader's sidecar has been a revolving door of orphans and agrobats. Not including alternate universes and what-if stories, Batman has taken five different Robins under his bat wing. Some moved on to pursue a superhero career of their own. Others didn't turn out so lucky. Enter Jason Todd. This poor kid was given the short end of the stick, and then the fans beat him to death with it. Jason grew up on the streets of Gotham, getting by through a life of petty crime, until eventually running into the Batman himself. By trying to steal the rims off the Batmobile. This kid How? got some <laughs> serious balls. I mean, you can't exactly look at the damn Batmobile and mistake it for someone else's car. Bruce had recently split up with the first Robin, Dick Grayson, and was on the lookout for a new sidekick. Impressed by Jason's scrappiness and latent ability, he had the 12-year-old suit up. Yes, he really was 12. I guess old yes. comics always had uh, kind of a leap in logic. Habits aside, All right. Bats hoped he could live up to the last Robin. Too bad this was a literal dick measuring contest that Jason had no chance in. Despite some moderate success, Jason wasn't exactly an extraordinary Robin. And the fans saw it too. In an unprecedented move, DC asked their readers to vote on whether or not Jason Todd would live Just or cruel. die. Yep, they voted to kill the shit out of that kid, Joker style. On an unrelated note, if you want to see Wiz die a horrible, gruesome death that will lead to some serious mental health issues, call 555-2337 for 555. I feel like that's still going to be set Jason up for was Wiz dead. versus Boomstick. Until Superboy Prime punched a hole in the fabric of reality and accidentally brought him back. True story, don't ask. And after a dip in a magic hot tub, the Lazarus okay. Pit, Jason was back in top form. I don't know about the Superboy thing, but I did know about this. Means nothing. Resolve renewed, Jason donned a new identity inspired by his own killer, the Red Hood. 
While the freaky death pit did bring him back stronger and faster, it turns out resurrection comes at a price. Jason was already a hothead, but Red Hood had a serious temper with violent outbursts. He wasn't all right in the noggin. But he had a goal. Destroy Batman and show him his humane methods were unfit for saving Gotham City. If Bats had actually killed the Joker way back when, he never would have killed Jason in the first place. For a raging psychopath, he's not exactly Got a wrong. point. Where Batman failed, Jason was up for the task. He pushed himself to become a killing machine even Bruce would have a tough time keeping up with. Even training with the League of Assassins and the All Cast, a group of monk assassins. So much ass stuff in this episode. In addition to Red Hood's wide array of skills, he also maintains a serious collection in his arsenal. Most obviously, his armored cowl. While it provides him with sturdy protection, the sensors within also allow him to scan his surrounding area, neutralizing any potential stealth threats. Plus, the okay. hood can also explode, so that's convenient? Sounds like I wonder if that's going to play into the battle. Recipe. On top of the red chrome dome, Jason packs all sorts of knives, explosives, guns, and he even wants some of these weird magic swords all called blades. the All Blades to fight off supernatural threats. But Presence probably most evil. important right. is his continual use of Venom. Wait, wait, wait. What's the symbiote doing here? No, no, the Venom drug. It's what Bane uses to get all, you know, swole. Wiz, have you ever been to the gym, like, even once? Dummy, I'm here to carry you. Hi, dummy. Burdens. Venom is an addictive steroid that increases strength and stamina tenfold. A normal dose also affects the mind, dumbing it down and causing bouts of rage. But Jason's... <laughs> Superpowers, here I come! You can call me the Red Neck! No, no, you're supposed to inject it! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, dummy, clean that up. Using Venom has made Red Hood strong enough to fight off monsters twice his size, tear through alien tendrils. Sorry, I gotta read this. Comes in several varieties, while well, the version Jason has access to boost his physical strength. Okay, so he doesn't get all big like Bane. Got it. Uh, alien tendrils is where we left off. And even once break the grip of Supergirl. He can hold up a small part of a collapsing building, dodge bullets. That's like a small thing to make a big deal out of. Ritual called the cleansing, which no human has been able to do in over a thousand years. And while it was difficult to determine if this feat was due to Jason's worthiness or stubbornness, it's safe to say that either way, he's a tough guy. Tough enough to punch through a submarine hull, or at least he carries enough explosives to blow a hole through it. Either way, I wouldn't want to go one-on-one -on -one with this guy. Red Hood also has plenty of that bat-like stealth ability to match his brute strength. He was able to sneak away from Supergirl. Even Bruce would be proud of that one. Despite how Jason tried to kill him. But the Red Hood failed, and was left to re-examine his own personal code. He ultimately decided to be a hero again. Albeit a very conflicted one. He even teamed up with Bats and even worked alongside other Robins. He also leads a group of ragtag heroes called the Outlaws. The roller coaster of Red Hood's crime fighting career has, at best, landed himself in that anti hero sweet spot, and at worst, made him a violent vigilante who takes the law into his own hands. Those are the heads of all your lieutenants. Oh shit. That took me two hours. You want to see what I can get done in a whole evening? That's gross. All right, the all right, it's probably going to be another ad. Through all possibilities. I'm thinking it's going to be Jason. I don't know. The competition in DC is just way steeper. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to change my vote. It's going to be Red Hood. All right, let's check it out. It's time for a death battle! Nailed it. Yo, Barbie. What do you want, Bruce? Eight assassins from the League of Shadows were gunned down two miles from your current location. Sounds like a party. They were all shot with rounds from a modified M4. A gun I know is in your arsenal. <laughs> as much as I'd love to take credit for that one, it wasn't me. Don't lie to me. It wasn't me, Bruce. But you know what? I like this interaction. In fact, I believe there's a bit of evidence that demands my attention right now. Jason. So is that Danny?
No, it's someone else. Dude, this is so rad. This wasn't in a sneak peek. part okay nice fight why not I guess I couldn't really blow it up. That's what I thought was gonna happen. So is Bucky gonna talk? Nice callback. No one. Shut up. Shut up. That was pretty cool. The venom. That had to come into play. That's all. That's all Bucky says. Oh, this is so cool. Break it. Oh. I 
feel like this is a swerve. Oh, that's right. This is Agent Barnes. Target eliminated. Damn. Shouldn't have switched my vote. A healing factor gave him a leg up, probably. Oh, talk about a headache. These two were quite evenly matched. They both had wells of experience, similar arsenals, and an unparalleled drive to win. They even had almost identical speed and reactionary feats. And Jason definitely had better still skills. However, Bucky Barnes earned the edge in almost every other way. Like how Red Hood had plenty of experience training with Batman and assassins, but Wendy had decades of training on him with commandos, as the captain's side piece, an emo assassin, and even as Captain America himself. The Winter Soldier also had an edge in defense. His metal arm was able to shatter a knife on impact, but when Red Hood took a similar hit, his helmet cracked. Red okay. really didn't have any way to stop that arm for good. While well, Bucky has a checkered pass, logically cannot be defined as pure evil. Yeah, I figured. That's probably going to be brought up in the Q&A. Poor Bucky's superhumanness. Sure, using Venom could even the playing field for a short time, but a brief power-up is nothing compared to a metal arm and the permanent infinity formula. And don't take Jason breaking Supergirl's grip out of context. She wasn't expecting the Venom, and they weren't even fighting in the first place. It's interesting, but and not why really bring as that up? as it sounds. Oh, because yeah, someone else might have. Effect, Venom is a 10 times strength booster. There's no way Red could match a Kryptonian in a real brawl. Red Hood was a deadly combatant, but the Winter Soldier one-upped him with superior experience, survivability, and a consistent strength advantage. Looks like Bucky was the winter. The winner is the Winter Soldier. All right, who's next? Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Come back next week to see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff, you can click the boxes right around here, and you can always pick up some DV merch at store.roosterteeth.com. So many snacks, so little time. Oh yeah, they already revealed this. Ragnarok? I have no idea who Krona is. I guess I shouldn't have changed my vote. I was just expecting maybe a little too much from the Venom. I think that Supergirl argument kind of swerved me. I don't know if I agree that Buck's, Bucky's experience is Well, thinking about it, I guess technically he does because Jason was like canonically dead for a long time. And I guess his resurrection was actually a bit more recent where while Bucky might have been reintroduced around the same timeline, I think he had a bigger backstory. The defense argument surprised me. Like, the hood actually cracking. Dude, that fight was so good. Again, I don't really know too much about either character's history, so I'm gonna have to wait until the Q&A to see what else other people have brought. I'm not gonna go over the comments right now. Was that Danny as a Winter Soldier? I couldn't really recognize him. But either way, like, that jerkle, jerker, I mumble sometimes. Uh, that Joker callback was just too good. Some of that PTSD for Jason, that makes a lot of sense. And that kind of Venom transformation, the actor did a really good job with that. It was just a great live action fight. I'm so glad that they started doing that. Boomstick and Wizard's interaction is always great. I do really like the host animations, how they brought that in. It's just awesome to see how Death Battle has been like, evolving and stacking up the production more and more don't know anything about Krona um, I know a little bit about Venom honestly like as a kid I thought it was really cool nowadays I think it's a, just a little lame but we'll see what he's got I'm gonna check out the Q&A see what uh, what are the tidbits and what are the factoids they have Get my thoughts on that. See you guys back at the Q&A. Hey.
So I'm back from watching the Death Battle cast. Got a different setup, because, you know. These mics are pretty cool, but they are very sensitive and pick up a lot of crap. First of all, uh, with these videos, I did always, I did want to make it more like a review. Um, check out the battle, check out the episode, give my thoughts, give it a grade. The fight gets an A. The important thing to remember about the uh the fights like the actual battles and death battle is that they're just made to look cool the winners of the match aren't determined in the fights like the animations or whatever the live actions what have you they're normally determined by analysis shout outs to the actors tim and tyler uh tyler some people might remember from uh he was daredevil in the last live action death battle and he was also android 17 and DBZ Light of Hope, which is really cool. I recommend checking that out. You know, some people have other little nitpicks about how they wish the fight would have turned out. Yeah, it would have been cool to see certain things happen in the fight, but I thought Ismahawk did a really good job with the uh, with the means that they have, like even beyond expectations. Good job to Ismahawk. Also, check out their channel. They made some really cool stuff, including some uh, the stuff that I personally checked out and recommend, which is their minute matchups. No research or nothing, nothing like death battle. They just do it for fun, but it's really cool. The episode as a whole, I give it a B plus. Uh, it was a fun episode. The only thing is, uh, and a couple of people have noticed this too, the analysis was actually pretty sparse. We weren't really given a whole lot of ways of of comparing like their stats, like their strength, their speed, their durability, other than uh, well, the durability maybe not so much. Um, but yeah, it just would have been nice to be able to have made a more direct comparison between the two characters before the fight actually started. But overall, it was still a fun episode. So as far as the Death Battle cast, it wasn't much of a Q&A. So I went into the comments and some other stuff that they talked about. I guess one of the things that people had a nitpick about was uh, Jason's training under Batman. Some people think, seem to think that that should have given him a leg up. My takeaway from that is uh, Jason's actually, he's Batman's failure as a mentor. So maybe in his case, being trained under, under Batman isn't as significant as some people might think it is. What's more significant seems to be his other training, uh, how he was world traveled, how he trained the League of Assassins and the All Cast. Um, that I honestly don't know much about, but uh, if anything, I think. It seems like that would have given him more of an even level in terms of experience uh, along with Winter Soldier. Although I do still think Winter Soldier gets the edge in that department as well. And the other thing that I've noticed was uh, Red Hood's other weaponry. Uh, like apparently he has the All Blade, some mystical weapons. I looked them up a little bit and from what I could gather and from what other people had mentioned, they seem to be mystical weapons. Only brought up in the presence of pure evil, which Bucky isn't. And they're more effective against uh, other mystical beings, which, again, Bucky isn't. So, it seems like there would not really be much of a factor in this fight specifically. But if anybody has any other details about that, uh, drop it in the comments and get that discussion going, because I'd like to know more about that. The only other thing that I saw was that I guess some people thought Winter Soldier was pretty tiny. Uh, apparently the actor himself is not very tiny. He's apparently pretty ripped. I did also think that he seemed kind of small in the episode, which I didn't really mind. I thought that was pretty neat. Like, why not? These aren't like big name Hollywood actors and Isma Hawk's not really casting for that. They're casting for people that can get the job done, which they did. And Tyler still looked pretty awesome as Winter Soldier. Like, he still looks scary and intimidating. Not sure what to expect from the next fight. Like I said, I don't know anything about Krona, so I'll try to look up some stuff uh, in anticipation of that. I'm kind of new to this, this whole reaction thing, and I guess this is the part where people say, you know, like, share, subscribe. I mean, if you want to. Uh, that's not really what I'm doing this for. What would be cooler is if... Uh, Anybody wants to drop down in the comments and keep this discussion going. Despite his presentation, Death Battle is not at the end-all, be-all argument for how these fights would go. This fight in particular was clearly very, very close. 
and there are arguments to be made that Red Hood should have won, which, uh, if that's how you feel, drop it in the comments if uh, Death Battle had actually missed some stuff, or if uh, people seem to think that they got most of it right. With that, I'll see you guys at the next video, Venom vs. Krona, check that out. Uh, also make sure to check out all the original creators, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.